Good afternoon, it's Josh coming back to you. It's Sunday afternoon, I believe February 1st here in Poco. We did have some sunshine, but now it's raining. Anyway, this next series of tests is going to see what happens when we vary the swirl device that's in the center. As you know, in the last test, series of tests, uh, setting the uh, the swirl device back to around 15 inches within the uh, 24 inch stainless steel jaw pipe I was able to to uh, produce the same level of frame, flame frequency as in the 15 inch mild steel uh, testing so that means that you can manipulate the frequency of the jaw pipe by changing the internal adjusting the length of the swirl pipe inside the device. Okay. What we're going to do, I use this for my measuring stick. I'm going back to where it's set. Right there, and we're going to take our measure. Now, as you can see, it's right there, right up to this point, that's the 23 inch mark. On the 24 inch test, the drill pipe did not fire, it wouldn't hold a steady burn. Let's see if we can change that by reducing the internal length of the drill pipe and therefore increasing the overall frequency. Okay, this is the right end. The drill pipe is set back about uh, almost two inches inside. Here we are. At some point to be making a castle bow and get rid of this sleeve. It's a pain having to put this tin foil on all the time. Turning on the power. The air's on low. Turning on the propane. We're going to have to leave it warm up for a minute or two. I'm just going to turn the camera over to the flame. Hopefully, we'll be able to generate some kind of critical frequency since we the drill pipe is is like a natural signal generator. We may be able to, uh, <clears throat> at some point, the frequency might hit the uh, critical frequency of propane, water, or even uh, carbon dioxide where the bonds could be broken. Using sound for the dissociation, right? There we go. Oh, hang on here. Better turn on the handle. Bring down the propane. That's to warm up here. There, good steady burn. We did not get this at the 24 inch mark. But we do get a steady burn at the 23 inch. I'm going to turn the uh, propane down just a bit more to kill the overflame. Now, as you can see, turning on the propane caused it to go resonant. Now, I'm going to show you the inside of the burn. I'm about two feet away. It's a uh, weak level three. 
kind of on the light blue color or dark blue color that's an indication of a wig burn so see if we can tune it up now it should be warm turning up the air look it goes down it takes away turning down the propane No, it goes out. There should be an improvement as we shorten the length. Uh, just get the flame inside to a transition tree or to a level three. Now what's going on? Here's on low. A little bit of wind here. That's strange because you fired up right away before. Pipes are already hot. Come on. That's strange, I can't get it to reignite. Okay, keep it at a transition area there. We'll turn up the air and see if we can pop it in. There we go. You snapped out. So we are seeing changes here. Strong level four, but it's pulsing. Not stable. Turning up the air. Okay. Turning up the air caused it to go out. Three inches still unstable. Okay. What's happening here? I'm um, getting blow by on the uh, where the tin fall is, and just causing the pressure difference. So I'm going to have to make make sure that's sealed. That's really important when you're doing these tests. You can't have propane coming out of there. So I'm going to have to correct that and come back. You know, we'll retry this again.